Hello again, Higher Algebra students. Back here with Lesson 3 of Unit 12, which is translating uh, these exponentials. We'll jump right into it here. So just a reminder, uh, we went, this was in uh, Lesson 1 as well, but uh, when we add inside the parentheses, that means we're going to the left. When we subtract inside the parentheses, that means we're going to the right. And again, if you think about, like, if we want this to be 0, um, then we would need x to be a negative number if we're going to add a number to it to get it to zero. So that's, again, negative numbers on the uh, on a coordinate grid go to the left. If we are going to subtract a number to get this to equal zero, then we, need, we would need x to be a positive number, so that would go to the right. So that's just kind of one little um, idea that you can consider to help remember which ones go left and right, since it seems a little backward that adding moves you to the left and subtracting moves you to the right. Uh, numbers being added or subtracted on the outside, that's again what moves us up or down. So when we look at, just again as a warm-up here, describing a transformation that happens, we've got um, a situation here where we've got x plus 2 squared. So again, the, the parent function here would have been x squared. And so we've got a plus 2 built in here. And then we've got a plus 5 on the outside. And again, the plus 2 means that uh, even though the original function, when we had uh, 0 squared, it was 0, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and so on. If you look at now the new function, and I'll just do a second y table here, if, if x is negative 2, well, that would be negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. 0 squared is 0, so then this would be 5. Uh, negative 1 plus 2 would be 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 5 is 6. 0 plus 2, again, if I put 0 in for x, like right here, uh, 0 plus 2, that would be 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. If I put a 1 in there, that would be 3 squared, or 9, plus 5 is 14. If I put a 2 in there, that would be 4 squared, 16 plus 5, which is 21. So our original graph, which I'll do in black here, would have looked like this. That's, again, the original graph of y equals x squared. And again, this is our parent function here of y equals x squared. Um, now if I were to go to the second graph, and again, I'll do this in red since I did these points in red. So this, is the, this would be the red graph that I'm about to draw. So I go to negative 2, 5. I have negative 1, 6. I have 0, 9. If I were to continue on and say go with a negative 4 and a negative 3 with an x here, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. So negative 4 is 9. And negative 3, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. So you can see this here is our new graph. And again, that went 1, 2 units to the left and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units up. And that would be the plus 2 is the 2 units to the left. And the plus 5 is the 5 units up because again, that's addition after the parentheses that made it go vertical. The addition inside the parentheses is what made it go two units to the left. So just a reminder there. So now in this lesson, we're gonna talk about this with exponentials. Again, following the same rules, the only difference is that x plus two might be in an exponent rather than being a base term like it was in that example. So really quickly here, x minus one, that would be one unit right. And again, that is just because subtraction moves it to the right, just like on that last example, addition moved it to the left. Okay, and the second one, we didn't do anything to the x, that's still alone, so there is no left or right, but this again would move us one unit up. Uh, here, again, the x is unaffected, so we won't go left or right at all, but that minus two means two units down. Uh, on this fourth one here, let's change colors just to shake it up a little bit. Now we added 4 to the x, and again, adding directly to the x there moves to the left. So this would be 4 units 
left. And continuing on, here we added one directly to the x, so that would be one unit left. And then we subtracted three, so that would be three units down. And finally, subtracted two directly from the x, so that would be two units to the right. And then the plus six here would be six units up. Okay, moving on here to another example with a graph now. So again, we're, we're looking at the function three to the x, and then uh, we're going to add 1. So we've got a base of 3 here, so that's going to make it be a little steeper instead of a base of 1. Um, and then the plus 1, of course, is going to be our, our vertical um, uh, translation up one unit. So if I put, again, if go to our typical negative 1, 0, and 1. And again, especially when x is alone um, and we don't have something added or subtracted, uh, I like my middle term to be whatever makes that exponent 0. So if it was x minus 3, then my middle term on this table would be a, th a 3. So 3 minus 3 would be the exponent. Um, here I'm just going to make it 0 because it is, again, 3 to the 0. 3 to the 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 3 to the negative 1. Well, 3 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 3. Again, 3 to the negative 1, because that negative exponent, that's the same as saying 1 over 3 to the 1. And so this would be 1 third plus 1. So this would be 1 and 1 third, or 4 thirds, or 1.33. And then the 3 to the 1 would be 3 plus a 1, so that would give us a 4. Not to, not to try and confuse you there, I'll just leave the 1 and the third there. And so at negative 1, I've got 1.33. 3, 3. At 0, I've got 2. And at 1, I've got 4. And I could, again, I could put 2 in there. 3 squared. 3 to the 2 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. And then this graph, in the end, would actually end up looking like this. And this asymptote right here is what's especially important to note, is again, our normal horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. But again, we had a one unit up vertical translation. So that means our horizontal asymptote here is y equals 1. So that's why we had one, 1 and 1 third. Again, if I were to do negative 2 as my x, well, negative 2 means it would be 3 to the negative 2, or 1 over 3 squared, which would be 1 over 9. And then plus 1, this would be 1 and 1 ninth, or 10 ninths, or 1.1 repeating. And if I did a... A 3, that would be 1 over 27 plus 1. So the plus 1 means we're never going to get below that number because, again, as we get to 1 over a, a billion, obviously that fraction is minute, but we still added 1. And so technically there is that horizontal asymptote with the limit idea of as we go to the left is, is that it would get down to 1, but, but, um, but the asymptote would still remain as y equals 1. Let's move on to another example here. Now the minus 1 is occurring in the exponent. And again, what would make the exponent equal 0? Well, that would be 1 minus 1. So I'm going to make 1 my middle term in my table, which means less than that would be 0 and more than that would be 2. And so 2 to the 0, 2 to the 0 minus 1 is 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 over 2 to the 1. So this would be 1 half or 0.5. If I put a 1 in there for x, that would be 1 minus 1, so that would be 2 to the 0, and 2 to the 0 would just be 1. And then 2 to the 2 minus 1 would be 2 to the 1, or 2. 2 to the 3 minus 1 would be 2 squared, or 4. 2 to the 4 minus 1 would be 2 to the 3rd, or 8, and so on. So I have 0, 1 half here. I have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 8 and so on. And what's going to happen here is this is not, there's not a vertical translation that's taking place here. So our horizontal asymptote just stays at y equals zero here. Again, the limit as we go to negative infinity here is going to be zero. Uh, that's again, you'll talk about that more in a calculus class. But for now, we view this horizontal asymptote as y equals zero that we're that we are never going to hit that point. Uh, without considering limits as we go to negative infinity and so on. So another example here, 
1 half to the x this time, minus 2. So again, the exponent does not have a subtraction with it. The minus 2 is after it, so that's a translation two units down. And so since the exponent is just x, I'm going to go with a 0, negative 1, and 1 again. And 1 half to the negative 1, again, 1 half to the negative 1 would be equal to 1 over 1 half. Well, again, 1 over 1 half is really 1 over 1 divided by 1 over 2. And again, we flip and multiply there, so that's really 1 over 1 times 2 over 1. And that gives us a y of 2. Now, again, we do have to subtract the 2 still, so that would be 0. Uh, 1 half to the 0, again, is always 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then if we put a 1 in there, that would be 1 half to the 1. And then minus 2, so that would be 0.5 minus 2, which would be negative 1 and a half. So as we look at this, uh, at negative 1, we've got a 0 y value. At 0, we've got a negative 1. At 1, we've got a negative 1 and a half. And again, I could continue on here. Uh, if I put in a 2, that would be 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. Minus 2 would be a negative 2 point, uh, excuse me, 1 fourth minus 2 would be negative 1.75. And you can see what we're doing is we're approaching a horizontal asymptote here of y equals negative 2. And that y equals negative 2, again, is a result of that vertical translation. Um, if I were to put in a negative 2 here, well, negative 2 would be 4 minus 2. So negative 2 would have a, if I put in a negative 3, that would be 8 minus 2, and that would be 6, and so on. So what's happening with this graph is we're decaying, again, because the base is less than 1. And we're working toward an asymptote of negative 2. So the, the graph, again, looks a little different because this value is less than 1. So that's why it's going downhill here before it uh, flattens out a little bit into that asymptote. All right, moving on again. Now we've got the x plus 4 in the actual exponent. So the x would be a negative 4 that we'd put in the middle one here, again, because negative 4 plus 4 makes that a 0. So whatever makes that exponent a 0 will be my middle row of my table. So 1 third of the 0 is 1. If I have negative 5 and negative 3 then, 1 third to the negative 1, 1 third to the negative 1, which is again the negative 5 plus 4. So that would be equal to 1 over 1 third, which is 3. And then negative 3 would make that 1 third to the 1, so this would be 1 third. So we've got negative 3 at 1 third, we've got negative 4 at 1. We've got negative 5 at 3. If I went to a negative 6 here, negative 6 would be uh, 1 third to the negative 2, which is 1 over uh, 1 third squared, which is going to be 9. So this would be 9 right here. And so you can see, again, pretty steep with this 1 third now. And working into a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 because, again, y equals 0 is our default asymptote, and we didn't have any vertical translation here. Uh, so that would be another example. Um, keep moving forward. We'll speed it up a little bit. Uh, the exponent here being x plus 1 means I'm going to put negative 1 in the middle because negative 1 plus 1 would make that 0. And then I'll have negative 2 and a 0 here. So again, when I put in the negative 1, then, my, then I'm at 4 to the 0, which is 1. 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. If I put in a negative 2, 4 to the negative 2 plus 1, well, that's 4 to the negative 1. And again, 4 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over 4 to the 1. So that's 1 fourth minus 3, which would be a negative 2.75. And if I put in a 0, that would be 4 to the first, which is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. So as I look at this, negative 2. So if I look at this here, negative 2 is going to be negative 2.75, which would be down here. Negative 1 would be negative 2. 0 would be 1. Again, if I kept going, if I put in a 1 here, that would be 4 to the 1 plus 1, which is 4 squared, or 16. 16 minus 3 is 13. So you can see this gets big pretty quickly here. Um, again, the bigger that base is, the steeper this is going to be. 
And the minus 3, again, this minus 3 element, which is a vertical translation, means our horizontal asymptote will be negative 3, which again means that we, before getting vertical quickly, um, we had plateaued at y equals negative 3 there. And again, because this base value is bigger than 1 again, that means that we have um, a, a exponential growth that we're going to see in this graph. Okay, here's another. 1 6 to the x minus 2. Again, what makes the exponent equal to 0 is going to be a 2. So I'll put 2 in the middle, 1 and 3 then. And again, it's now a base of 1 6, so we're looking at decay again. And this plus 6 means we're looking at a y equals 6 for a, an asymptote in this problem. Again, I probably should be on all of these put, drawing the asymptote in um, with a dash line. Um, this is y equals 6. Okay. So as I put the values in, again, if I put this middle value of 2 in, that would be 2 minus 2. So 1 6 to the 0 is 1. 1 plus 6 is 7. If I put that 1 in, that would be 1 6 to the 1 minus 2. So 1 6 here. Green. 1 6 to the negative 1, which is 1 over 1 6 which is equal to 6, so 6 plus 6 is 12. And then I put the 3 in. 3 minus 2 is 1, so 1 6 to the 1 plus 6, well, that would be 6 and a 6, and a six um, or 6.17, or um, 37 6, however you wanted to write that. But I have, again, 1 12 is right here. 2 7 is right here. And then 3 at 6 and a 6, and, a six. and you can see... While we start off the graph, we're coming steep negative into these points right by the asymptote and immediately flattening out there as we get to that asymptote of y equals 6. So this is exponential decay again, again because our base is 1 sixth, so it's a value between 0 and 1. And again, this time we have translations 2 units to the right and 6 units up um, versus our typical exponential decay that we would see. A uh, couple last ones here, 2 to the x minus 5, so I'm going to put 5 as my middle term, uh, 4 and 6 around that. So 2 to the 5 is, two to, excuse me, 2 to the 5 minus 5 is 2 to the 0, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Put in a 4, that would be 2 to the negative 1 minus 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, so 1 half minus 1 means this would be a negative 0.5. And then 6, uh, 2 to the 6 minus 5 is 2 to the 1. So 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. So we have the points 4, negative 1 half, 5 is at 0, and 6 is at 1. Can I continue on here? If I put in a 7, that would be 2 squared, because that would be 7 minus 5. So 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. If I put in an 8, so this would be 7, 3. If I put in an 8, um, You'd have 8 minus 5, which is 3. So 2 to the third is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. Again, because that would be 2 to the 8 minus 5 minus 1. So 8 would be 7. And you can see, while it might not have been immediately obvious after these first three points, at that point it might not have been obvious that this was a, an exponential growth. Um, again, we do have the... Uh, the fact that this is a base of 2, so we should know its growth right away. And it just happens to be moved 5 units right and 1 unit down. So we had a, a horizontal asymptote of negative 1, which is right along this line, which means our graph ended up looking like this. All right. We'll leave it at that, and thank you again, as always, for listening. If you have questions, please ask. Um, we'll leave it at that.